Good afternoon, everybody, and thank you very much for joining us here at Royal Bookers for one of our online presentations this week, looking at all things France. Uh, so thanks very much for taking the time to be with us this afternoon. My name is Anna Davis. I'm the sales and marketing manager for the UK team here, and I will be your host uh, this afternoon. I'm delighted to say though that I am going to be joined later in the presentation by Magalie Kennedy, from SNCF, from the French Railways, uh, to talk a little bit about the onboard experience and the French Rail uh, network. Uh, but in the meantime, I will uh, share with you uh, some of our most popular French trips, uh, looking at France, but also uh, just a few trips that also uh, combine other uh, destinations too. So uh, just whilst we wait for the last few people to join, uh, if you do have any questions during the presentation, uh, hopefully you can see a questions box on the right hand side of the screen. Please do pop any questions in there that you may have, and we will have some time for questions and answers uh, at the end of the presentation. If for any reason we don't get through all of the questions, then uh, one of my uh, colleagues will be in touch with you later on today. Uh, but without further ado, we will make a start. Uh, so delighted to say, first of all, that we do have uh, a sale on our French trips at the moment. We do have an offer running on uh, our French holidays with uh, savings of up to £250 per couple uh, on those trips. Or if you're a solo traveller, £125 per person savings uh, available at the moment. Please do have a look on our website, railbookers.co.uk, for uh, any more information on that with some also suggested trips where that saving is applicable. Uh, I know that we do have a, a number of um, people listening today that join us regularly. I hope you won't mind me just taking a few minutes for those who are perhaps newer to Railbookers, uh, just to mention a few things before we get uh, underway with the French trip specifically about what makes Railbookers a little bit different. Um, so just a few things to touch on here. We have been creating independent customized holidays for about 17 years now. Uh, and so our trips are independent, they're not group uh, escorted customers do travel uh, independently and what that means is you then have the freedom and flexibility to very much create the holiday that you want with everything in it that you want to do where, where you want to go uh, but nothing in it that you don't so all of the holidays that I'm going to share with you today are really just there as a suggestion um, of a, an itinerary that, that works well but nothing about that itinerary is set in stone so if you wanted to add in extra destinations if you want to add in extra nights uh, then all of that is possible and we'll talk about the options that you have available as we go through uh, the presentation uh, the one thing uh, that makes us unique in uh, the rail holiday space is that we can book our holidays up to two years in advance so booking now uh, right through to October 2023 now, if you are in the process of uh, planning your next trip and you're looking for some ideas, uh, then do consider downloading our digital brochures. We have a, a range of brochures available on our website uh, from our worldwide um, itineraries through to our Scottish holidays, our uh, luxury journeys. There's a whole host of brochures available for you to access. Uh, and also to mention that within the hour of the presentation finishing today, you will get an email with uh, not only a copy of the recording, if you want to share that with friends or um, a partner, for example, but you will also within that email have a link to access the digital brochures. So do keep an eye out for that uh, and download them to have a browse later on, perhaps. Uh, our maximum flexibility policy is still in place uh, and so we are giving customers the freedom to, to change their holiday dates without any penalty or cancellation fees. If you have any questions on that, we'd like more information on that, please do give us a call on 0203 780 2222. Now, I mentioned that our holidays are independent, they're not escorted, but just to add that you are not alone necessarily when you uh, travel. If you do need our assistance, if you do have any issues whilst you're away, you do benefit from the 24-hour support from our team around the world. We have offices in North America, in Australia and here in the UK. And on your travel documentation, before you go, you will have an emergency out of hours number that you can call uh, should you need help whilst you are on holiday. And lastly, before I head into uh, the French trips that I'm looking forward to sharing, just a note about the rail partners that we have uh, around the world, including SNCF, as I say, who will uh, be joining us uh, at the end of the presentation. Uh, but we work with rail partners around the world to create very much a, a one-stop shop for our customers. So you can book with us 
of course, not only the rail tickets, but also the hotel accommodation, sightseeing excursions, ferries, transfers, flights, car hire and some of our itineraries as well. Uh, so you can book every element that you need for your trip, uh, as I say, up to two years uh, in advance. So without further ado, let's dive into our French trips. Uh, and I'm going to start with our Côte d'Azur Nice and Cannes trip, uh, which really demonstrates how easy it is to travel uh, to France and throughout France by uh, high speed train particularly. So this itinerary starts uh, as, as all of our trips do really with a Eurostar journey from uh, London to Paris, from St Pancras to Paris Gare du Nord, uh, and then a quick change in Paris to the Gare de Lyon will have you travelling down on the high speed network to Nice. You're in Nice uh, first of all for three nights with a day trip out to Monaco, uh, before then traveling back along the coast to Cannes for a three night stay there before traveling back up to Paris and then to the UK on Eurostar. Just a couple of things to mention here. If you wanted to start this journey from your local UK station, we can also book the UK rail tickets uh, for you to do that. Uh, and also depending on where you live and how far away you are from London, Perhaps if you're within a few hours of London, uh, then you can do this journey all the way down to the south of France in one day. If you're a bit further out, then uh, you have a couple of options. We may book overnight accommodation for you in London, so you can travel down the night before and then depart St Pancras relatively early in the morning for the onward journey. Or you do also have the option to break the journey in Paris and perhaps stay there overnight before traveling uh, to the south of France. So lots of options available. Um, as I say, this is your holiday, so you can book it your way uh, and do exactly uh, what you want to do with complete freedom and flexibility. So as we always do, let's have a quick look at some of the destinations uh, within uh, these fantastic holidays, starting with Nice. I think Nice can sometimes be a little underrated. It's, it's often a place people think they know, but there's a lot more to Nice behind the scenes. Um, not least because of its geography, it, it has this real hybrid feeling between France and Italy. So if you like the food, the culture of France and Italy, this is a perfect place uh, for you. It also has a great art heritage um, and it's got some super museums, uh, not least the Musée Matisse, the Musée Chagall and also the Modern Art Museum, all worth uh, a visit. Uh, Matisse, Chagall, Picasso, Renoir all made Nice uh, their home at some point or another during their lives. Uh, so it has a real art heritage, as I say, that's definitely worth exploring whilst you're there. You do have a day trip uh, along the coast to Monaco from Nice. This is done on a local uh, train service. And although it's not a scenic rail journey uh, in a sense, like the Glacier Express, for example, in Switzerland, it's not a recognized scenic route. It has an incredibly scenic journey uh, as it hugs the Mediterranean coast all the way along. So a real rail highlight actually on this holiday. And you have the whole day in Monaco uh, to explore the world of the rich and famous before heading back to Nice. Then you will travel further back along uh, the Côte d'Azur to Cannes and you'll have a three night stay here in Cannes. Again, a lot going on in Cannes, um, obviously known for the film festival uh, and the sort of glitterati lifestyle, but actually a lot behind the scenes uh, in Cannes. It has a fantastic old town, Le Suque. It has um, a ruined castle that you can climb for fantastic views over the wider area. You can also visit uh, a couple of small islands which are out in the bay uh, off the coastline uh, for a bit of escape from the hustle and bustle as well. That's highly recommended and lots of little boat trips do that from uh, the harbour. Staying in the south of France, uh, but with a, a different destination, next we're gonna move on to Avignon and the highlights of Provence. So this is a six day trip with a starting price of 949 pounds. Uh, and just as with the previous trip, it starts with a Eurostar journey to Paris. Uh, you'll then cross Paris. And I should mention a couple of ways to do that, either using the Metro tickets that we include uh, as part of our holiday uh, package, or indeed we can also organize a private transfer for you to be met by a driver at the Gare du Nord and taken to the Gare de Lyon. Uh, for that onward journey. You'll travel south on the high speed service to Avignon. And we use Avignon very much as a base for this holiday. You're there for five nights. Uh, and whilst you're there, a number of day trips and excursions organized for you and included in the holiday. 
uh, you'll have a day trip out to the beautiful Provencal villages of Roussillon and Les Bois de Provence. Uh, and during that day trip, you'll also visit the uh, famous Pont du Gard. Uh, you also have uh, plenty of opportunity to discover uh, more of its Roman history in this area of France with visits to Orange, Nîmes and Arles. Uh, and of course, let's not forget wine tasting, uh, some of the finest French wine of Chateau Neuf du Pape as well. So uh, if we look, first of all, at Avignon, a great base to explore uh, the wider area. It's really well connected with local rail services uh, from Avignon Centre, TGV station, just a short walk from uh, the main centre itself. Dominated, of course, by uh, the UNESCO World Heritage Protected Palace of the Popes, as you see here. It was home to uh, the Popes in the 14th century uh, and all sorts of uh, events take place around the palace. Uh, there is wine tasting sometimes included in the palace as well, uh, but definitely worth visiting uh, whilst you're there. It's also just a great town to explore with its cobbled streets, lots of small uh, squares to sit and have a few glasses of rosé in the sunshine. Uh, just a lovely uh, town to uh, spend some time in. As I say, then also a great base to explore the wider area and uh, you will have a day trip, a small group trip out uh, to the beautiful Provencal villages uh, and also to this, the Pont du Gard. So uh, an ancient aqueduct uh, built in the first century to carry water to Nîmes. Uh, it's the highest of all Roman aqueduct bridges and uh, thought to be one of the, the best, if not the best, uh, well preserved. And it was added to UNESCO's uh, heritage list in 1985. Spectacular setting um, on the river, of course, uh, and definitely one of the highlights of the day trips. Continuing with the Roman heritage of this region, you'll also visit Orange uh, with one of the best preserved theatres uh, in the Roman Empire. And after Orange, you'll also uh, be driven through the vineyards of Chateau Neuf du Pape with some wine tasting en route as well. Next uh, will be Nîmes, and this you do on the rails, just a short train ride from Avignon uh, for more uh, Roman monuments here, the Maison Carré, and there's also a double-tiered amphitheatre in Nîmes uh, too. Then it's on to Arles. Arles, uh, a, a beautiful city, beautiful location, also with a rich Roman heritage, as you can see on the screen there, but also, of course, um, very strongly connected to the work of Vincent van Gogh, who spent a lot of time in Arles, and you have the uh, foundation, the, the Vincent van Gogh Foundation, uh, to visit with one of the best collections of his work influenced by the city itself uh, to visit. So moving north and east this time uh, and next wanted to take you to Strasbourg, Colmar and Basel. Now this is a great combination of destinations at any time of the year but it's particularly good if you are considering a last minute getaway for this year uh, with the um, traditional Christmas markets that Strasbourg and Colmar uh, both have. Uh, so certainly, as I say, one to consider if you're looking for a last minute getaway, uh, but also great for, for summer destinations too, to be honest, for, for next year. It's a real all rounder. It's a six day holiday with a starting price of £1,029. A really easy rail journey this, because you will travel from St Pancras to Paris Gare du Nord, again on, on Eurostar. Uh, but the transfer journey to uh, take you to Strasbourg is done from the Gare de l'Est, which is just about a 10 minute walk from the Gare du Nord. So a really easy transfer to do to get you onto the high speed network to travel east. Uh, you'll have uh, some time in Strasbourg with a day trip out to Colmar and then it's on to Basel over the border into Switzerland before returning back to Paris on a direct high speed service uh, before then catching your Eurostar home. So Strasbourg uh, and, the, and the wider Alsace region really characterised by these uh, timber framed buildings has a, a very similar sort of mixed heritage to Nice really because of its Strasbourg's position on the German border this time uh, that really uh, has influenced its cuisine, uh, its heritage uh, and its its atmosphere really. So you have these uh, amazing cobblestone streets, the canal, the half timbered houses in this uh, particular area of Strasbourg uh, called Petite France. Uh, and uh, from there, you will also take a day trip out to Colmar, uh, one of uh, the world's best Christmas markets in Colmar. So, as I say, if you're considering doing this for later this year, uh, if you are traveling with us between mid-November and mid-December, then your day trip to Colmar will also include 
um, a guided tour uh, and visit of uh, the Christmas market itself with a, a local guide. If you're traveling outside of that time, uh, you'll also have plenty of time to explore uh, the Little Venice area of Colmar, a uh, beautiful part uh, of this area of France with Le Quai de la Poissonnerie, uh, lovely uh, narrow streets, again some more colourful timber buildings which haven't been changed for centuries, so it's a real day trip highlight that as well. Next you'll travel over the border to Basel, beautiful location right on the river of course, well known uh, for its river cruise uh, departure points and perhaps something to consider if you have a, a rebooked river cruise for 2022 or even 2023, wanting to perhaps make the most of that trip and extend your stay, consider perhaps booking something like this uh, to travel to Basel by the rails uh, and stay in a few destinations en route or indeed once you've disembarked in Basel, you could do this trip in reverse uh, to make the most of your time away. Uh, that's certainly something that we've seen other customers choose to do uh, over the last uh, few months ahead of their river cruises next year. In Basel, you do have a two hour tour uh, of the city to introduce you to uh, some of its uh, key areas, key monuments. It has a fantastic fine art museum, one of the best collections in Switzerland, and its impressive Minster uh, is home to one of Europe's most famous thinkers, Erasmus. So uh, getting down to the food and wine of France and our gastronomic capitals of France is perfect for anybody like me uh, who loves a good meal and a few glasses of wine. This takes in some of the real gastronomic highlights of the country with really a round trip from uh, Paris. So starting with two nights in Paris on to Dijon, down to Lyon round to Bordeaux uh, for a two night stay in Bordeaux before traveling back up to Paris for a final night before returning on Eurostar across the channel. So lots of opportunities to taste some real delicious highlights ac across France, Boeuf Bourguignon in Dijon and, and the Burgundy area. You have the famous wines of Pinot Noir and Chardonnay uh, in the Burgundy region as well. You have a time in Lyon with a, a walking tour. Uh, Lyon very much thought of as the gastronomic capital of France itself. And then some time in Bordeaux, uh, where you'll uh, be able to sample some of the finest wines in the world there too. So let's have a look at some of those destinations, starting with Dijon. As I say, historically, the, the, the capital of Burgundy has a very rich a wealthy heritage from uh, the Dukes of Burgundy for over 300 years uh, and has a, a, a lot of historic buildings like this with the half timber frames. It also, of course, uh, very intrinsically linked to mustard uh, and something that's really fun to do for a few hours whilst you're in Dijon is visit some of the artisan producers of mustard, many of them in the town, where you can go and watch the mustard being made, lots of different mustards to be sampled and there are a lot of different uh, Dijon mustard varieties I found out myself a few years ago uh, but would definitely encourage you uh, to do that whilst you're there and of course uh, for an aperitif before dinner it must be so you must have a kir, uh, the kir royale uh, produced or the kir itself the black currant liqueur produced itself in the burgundy region so uh, that is also a must whilst you're in Dijon. Next, it's on to uh, Bone, and you have a day trip from Bone. It's about a 30 minute rail journey from uh, Dijon. And you will be treated to some sites, including this, the Hospice de Bone, which has one of the most well preserved um, of all of the Burgundy roof tiles in, in the region. So these roof tiles, again, linked back to the, the Dukes of Burgundy heritage, visible on many of the, the major uh, monuments across Burgundy, but the Hospice de Bourne here, one of the, the finer examples dating back to the 15th century. Uh, you'll then move down to Lyon, as I say, widely uh, referred to as the gastronomic capital of France itself. A beautiful town, city, again, one I think that can often be overlooked, actually. It's, it's often travelled through and not had an awful lot of time spent in it uh, by UK uh, travellers. But it's a great destination for a few nights. Uh, so much to see. It also has quite a lot of um, Roman heritage as well. It has a historic centre with Roman artefacts up on the Presque Isle. It's also where the Rhone River and the Saone River meet, which creates this sort of little island in uh, the middle of the city. And it has the Fourvier Basilica up on the hill, which offers great views 
over the wider area. Um, top tip gastronomically, whilst you're in Lyon, you must try praline brioche. It's something I discovered a few years ago, uh, widely available in all of the uh, boulangeries, certainly in the old town, uh, and also at the uh, larger food market at Les Halles de Lyon, just a, a few um, minutes outside of the main centre. But do try some praline brioche. It has this pink appearance, but it's absolutely delicious. You'll then travel uh, across the country to Bordeaux uh, for a two night stay in Bordeaux. And whilst you're there, you will have some time at La Cité du Vin in Bordeaux, right on the edge of the River Garonne. And within this uh, museum dedicated to wine, you can find out pretty much anything you want to about any wine from anywhere in the world. Uh, you have a tasting session with a trained sommelier here, uh, along with a lunch in the panoramic restaurant. Uh, and you have a selection of, of over 800 wines from 70 different countries to choose from. So definitely something for everybody's wine taste. And we include uh, a visit to La Cité du Vin in all of our uh, Bordeaux holidays as well, I should add. Now, the great thing about the French network is that it's also very well connected to uh, the countries that surround it. So I uh, wanted to just mention a few uh, holidays that combine other destinations. For example, this, our Paris and Amsterdam two centre, two city uh, trip for a six day holiday with a starting price of 849. As I say, if you wanted to add in extra nights in any of these destinations, that's absolutely uh, possible. And again, Paris and Amsterdam work very, very well, perhaps pre river cruise, post river cruise, if you want to extend your holiday. So you have, first of all, the Eurostar to Paris with a two night stay before then traveling directly between Paris and Amsterdam on the high speed network uh, for a three night stay there and then back on the Eurostar directly to St Pancras. And neither Paris and Amsterdam really require much introduction, uh, to be honest, but just a few suggestions, I guess, of my own of what to visit when you're in Paris. Uh, one of my top tips would be the Musée Marmaton, which is uh, on the edge of the 16th district of Paris. It has one of the most significant collections of Claude Monet's paintings, uh, and it's also housed within the absolutely beautiful Chateau de Muet. So very easily reached, that's the Musée Marmaton, uh, and I would highly recommend if you're visiting Paris. Uh, slightly different, but also uh, I would also recommend the catacombs, which are in the 14th district, um, which hold the remains of more than 6 million Parisians over the years, um, and a great, uh, slightly quirky, unusual way to spend a few hours in the south of the city in an area that doesn't necessarily get explored by tourists that much, uh, but I would uh, highly recommend. In Amsterdam, again, you have the freedom and flexibility to explore these cities and, and visit what interests you, but you do get a two-day hop-on, hop-off pass uh, for both the bus and, of course, in Amsterdam for the boat, so you can also travel on the water. Lastly, before I hand you over to Magali to talk about the trains themselves, I also wanted to uh, share with you this trip, our Barcelona, Carcassonne, Bordeaux and Paris uh, quadruple centre. Now on the map, you'll see that it suggests it starts with a flight from the UK down to Barcelona and then rail back north through France. Uh, you could do it that way. You can easily also do this as a return trip by rail. So if you'd like to travel from St Pancras to Paris and Paris then directly to Barcelona, the Paris to Barcelona journey takes about six and a half hours. Very easy to leave St Pancras at breakfast time and be in Barcelona for your evening meal if you'd like to do the whole trip by rail. Either way, you'll arrive in Barcelona, have a two night stay there before crossing the border north to the fairy tale setting of Carcassonne in the south. You'll then cross up to Bordeaux and have a two night stay there before completing your tour with a two night stay in Paris ahead of your Eurostar back home. And just a few final slides from me. First of all, Barcelona. I mean, so many things to visit uh, in Barcelona, but this, the Montjuic area of Barcelona is definitely recommended. This is the National Palace, which was uh, built for the 1929 International Exhibition and has been the home to the National Art Museum of Catalonia uh, since 1934. Uh, so uh, definitely one to recommend. And then, as I say, you'll also on this trip visit the, the fairy tale setting of Carcassonne. Uh, the UNESCO World Heritage Site is located on this 
magnificent hilltop setting in the, the heart of uh, France's Languedoc Roussillon region. Uh, it's the perfect place for anybody that loves history, beautiful scenery, wine, so much to see and do, uh, not least this magnificent old city and its ramparts where you could really lose days, never mind hours, uh, but a lovely place to explore some magnificent restaurants within its walls as well. And then you've also got the, the more modern part of the town uh, at the bottom of the hill with Plascano, for example, which is a, a lovely place for a morning coffee or a, a pre-dinner drink. And of course, you've got the Canal du Midi that runs through Carcassonne as well. Uh, so lots to see and do for your two nights or longer if you want to extend here in Carcassonne. And without further ado, I will then pass you to Magali to uh, share with you a little bit about travelling on board the trains in France. Merci, Anna. Bonjour to um, everybody here on this call. My name is Magali and I'm the representative of SNCF covering the UK um, and Ireland. And Rail Booker, being the rail experts, have done a magnificent job in telling about the, magni the, the really good destinations in France. I'm now feeling very hungry, wanting a kir and a brioche au praline, plus maybe a choucroute from Alsace. But um, apart from that, let's uh, let me let me explain what is NC what is SNCF and the trains that you will be travelling on when going on to Railbooker's itinerary. So here you have a few figures to explain what SNCF Société Nationale des Chemins de Fer is. And briefly, SNCF is the seventh biggest employer in France. It has 260,000 employees. That's um, twice as much as the total, the total employees um, in the UK for UK Rail. We have about two and a half times more electrified line than there is in the UK. It's, it's, it's a bigger country, so there is more lines uh, to cover. And the significant part is the high speed. So for high speed, we have two and a half thousand kilometers. The UK to date just 317, but I know this is this is increasing a lot. Um, if you want to go next, Anna, we're going to look at the different types of trains you will be traveling on. The first and perhaps best known of all is the TGV Train Grande Vitesse, and TGV. Um, is the high-speed long-distance train service. Um, they have two floors and their top speed is 320 kilometers. To put the things in perspective, the fastest train there is in the UK on domestic cities in the UK goes up to 225 kilometers, with the exception of Eurostar, um, which is um, going up to 300 kilometers, of, um, 300 kilometers an hour. Um, TGV covers about 200 destinations in France, which is a, a huge proportion of the French territory. And by the end of 2021, 90% uh, 95% of TGV Inuits will have replaced the TGV. So the difference between TGV Inuits and TGVs is the um, <clears throat> the fittings inside and also the um, services available on TGV Inuits, which are superior to the ones on TGV. Then we have the TER, Transport Express Regional. These are local trains, they are non-high speed, and they link several cities within, within one region. And the last one is Intercity, and they are non-high speed classic train. They're covering medium distances, not located in the same region. So according to Anna's um, itineraries, it's very likely that you would be experiencing several of these trains during your, during your trips. Let's now talk about the safety measures implemented by SNCF for our passengers to travel in safety. <coughs> Excuse me. So on board of, uh, of our trains, wearing a mask is compulsory for long distance trains at stations and on board of the trains. This complements all the safety measures that we have implemented, such as extensive cleaning of any contact areas within the train. So whether you're talking about um, internal, external doors, push buttons, tables, toilets, flush and taps. All of it is, um, all of it is being uh, cleaned extensively and the, um, there is cleaning going once a day at, at the depots. And also, uh, so you understand the air on board of the TGVs is renewed every nine minutes, it's fresh air.
Right. You can also see the um, onboard stickers, the blue stickers you're seeing on your screen right now is what is displayed at stations and on board of TGVs, reminding uh, people what they should be doing to travel in safety. So um, it's washing hands uh, frequently, coughing and sneezing in your elbow, um, and respect, respecting the social distanciation. And once again, you have the little symbol on the right, uh, reminding passengers to always wear a mask on board, as well as within stations. Last but not least on this, in, in France, and I was there early last week, um, the restrictions are, are not lifted as much as they are in the UK, in the sense that for any restaurants you will go to, or shopping centre, or any public places, you will be required to present your past sanitaire, which is um, your NHS app, proving that you have been double jabbed. My personal recommendation is to have this on your phone, but also to print off um, the piece of paper and present one or the other so that will avoid um, any, any trouble. So please, please wear a mask. It's compulsory within the trains at the stations. Have your pass sanitaire uh, ready. If you want, you can also download the French equivalent of the NHS app called Tout Santé Covid, but the NHS app is widely accepted. Earlier on, I was talking to you about, um, about the TGV Inui stations and destinations. So we have up to um, 200 by the end of 2021. And new destinations that have opened in 2020 are Paris, Nîmes, Montpellier, Béziers, and Paris, Paris, Perpignan. So it's giving um, a very high coverage of high speed train services from Paris to uh, those destinations. And the French network is quite big. We have 3,000 stations in France. If you compare it to the UK, it's 2,500 stations. So once again, a bit of a bigger country. Um, so we have, we have more stations. Now, looking at what you will be traveling in. So what you're seeing right now is the inside, the interior of a TGV. And we're going to start with a uh, second class, which is the middle image. And in second class, uh, you have reclining seats. You have one plug socket that you can share between two passengers. And should you be feeling hungry, you can go to the buffet bar um, available on the train. Should you want to travel in a little bit more comfort, you, you can use our uh, Premier or Business Premier, which are um, offering more services. So for example, for a Business Premier ticket, you will have access to the uh, Grand Voyageur lounges at uh, selected, destina selected stations in France. You will be greeted by um, a host uh, on the platform. You will be given a hot drink and a snack. And on board, you will also be able to look at um, digital press. We, we, don't, we don't give uh, physical magazines or newspaper. This is in the spirit of um, making sure we don't produce unnecessary waste. In the first class seat, which is your image on the right hand side, you have one plug socket per person. For Paris Lyon, you are given uh, another snack and hot drink, digital newspaper. You, if you feel a little bit hungry, you have the ability to use the SNCF app, order food from the bar, and the host, the first class host, will be bringing you that food directly to your seat. And all the seats are reclining. So you have to pay for the food, but it's brought to you should you want to. Now, talking about food and still feeling hungry, we have made a huge amount of effort in making sure that uh, what we offer on board is consistent with our policy of offering sustainable products, organic products. Um, and 92% of what we serve on board is made in France. 37% is uh, organic from sustainable agriculture. All of our products do not contain uh, preservatives, colorings, artificial flavorings. And um, we will not, by default, offer you sugar, wooden stirrers, anything like this. You have to request it simply because we're trying to reduce waste. Um, should you want to bring your own cup, we strongly encourage this. And there is, um, I think it's a 20 euro cent discount on your coffee if you bring your own cup. 
all the uh, paper carriers bags and, and napkins are recycled the glass uh, the glasses and any uh, waste items is being is being sorted um, last but not least we are trying to fight against uh, against waste therefore when we are just about to um, on the last couple of trains if there are any food available left that will be discounted to make sure it's being sold and if it's not sold it's going to be donated to local charities okay so i was talking to you about tgvs there will be a new tgv soon uh, coming out in 2024 and we are going to put an emphasis on um, reducing even more our carbon footprint, saving energy, increasing passenger capacity, and um, having a, a train that's able to uh, respond and answer to the, the needs of today and the future. So at present, which is already very good, um, a, a TGV who has a lifespan of 40 years is already 92% recyclable. We're going to up this and it's going to be recyclable to 97%. We're going to improve our CO2 footprint by 37%. We're going to uh, further our energy savings by 20%. So for information, and I don't know if many of you know this, but right now, every time the train breaks, that generates energy that we re-inject into the grid. It's not only the SNCF doing that, it's also happening in the UK, but this is a very clever way of creating energy, recycling the energy and using the energy. Also on board, um, for a, when you arrive at station, the overlights are slightly stronger than when you are during the journey. We just want to make sure that we use the energy and the light as cleverly as we possibly can. All of our drivers are trained in opti driving, meaning they are trained to only use the energy that they need for the journey they're taking according to if they go on a slope, they need to use more energy, reduce the energy if they're going down a slope, and so on and so on. And we will be increasing passenger capacity by 20% through um, redesigning the interior spaces of the TGV. So it's very, very exciting. And 2024, please watch, um, watch for the new TGV. Last but not least, the recyclability, the CO2 emissions, the train is by far the most environmentally friendly method of travel. It's one of the safest too. And on the right hand side of the screen, you can see a campaign that is current right, uh, right now in France. Grande vitesse bas carbone, high speed, low emissions. We extensively communicate on this. And um, through the little, through the diagram you can see in the middle of my screen, you can see that the train per kilometer generates 1.7 gram of CO2. If you compare this to a shared passenger car with 2.2 passengers, this is already. Um, a huge huge difference and if you compare it to the plane even more and uh, a single use car even even more so on average we estimate that the train travel generates 50 less co2 than a car and 80 times less than a plane so it's a very green method of transport it's ever more popular um, and is the way to the future to preserve our planet this concludes my presentation for today, and I wanted to thank you very much for listening to me. And uh, it's great to be co-hosting with Anna from Real Bookers. Thank you, Magali. Thanks for your time there, and thanks for that insight into uh, the future of rail travel in France. Uh, just to finish off uh, from my side, if you would like any more information on the holidays that we've talked about today on the on the destination of France more widely, do visit our website at railbookers.co.uk. On there, you'll find individual pages on all of the holidays that I've shared today and more with the day-by-day -day itineraries, the route maps and the pricing through to 2023. Uh, but if you are in the process of planning, considering a trip and would like some uh, help and advice, please do, as I can say, give us a call on 0203 780 2222. At this point, uh, next, it's for me to uh, pass over to yourselves for any questions that you may have uh, for me or indeed Magali uh, on all things France uh, or Railbookers. So I'll just have a quick look 
at some of the questions that have come through. Uh, and we do have a question on uh, luggage on the French uh, services and, and indeed on the European network. Uh, so uh, I, will, I will take that. If you are traveling uh, as a sort of a return trip by rail and, and no flights included, then your luggage allowance is, is really very lenient and very flexible. Most customers will travel with a, that's a medium sized suitcase and a piece of hand luggage, but that's not weight restricted. It's not uh, liquid restricted. So you can very much pack uh, as you wish. Uh, one caveat to that is that the luggage is yours uh, throughout the holiday uh, to transport, so you do need to be able to carry it. Wheels are highly recommended for traveling around the stations and getting on and off the trains with. Uh, but the other bonus of traveling on, particularly on the high speed network across Europe, is that there are infinitely more luggage racks available within the trains uh, overhead as well. Uh, so your luggage can travel very close to you uh, whilst you're on uh, the train services. Uh, I also see a few questions about our hotel basis um, and board. So uh, thank you for those questions. Um, so in short, uh, most of our holidays are based on a bed and breakfast. Uh, and they also price wise include all of the rail journeys and any excursions and sightseeing uh, that are mentioned uh, in the day by day itinerary as well. In terms of the hotel accommodation themselves, uh, really very much up to you. So typically our holidays include staying at four star hotels, but we do have a range of three, four and five star hotels in most of the cities uh, and towns destinations that are included in our trip. So uh, the choice is yours, not only in terms of budget, but in terms of style, decor um, and location within uh, the destination as well. We're always available to make recommendations and suggestions based on customer feedback. Uh, but if there is a hotel perhaps that you want to revisit or you've had recommended, uh, please do let our rail experts know uh, and 95% of the time we can accommodate that request uh, as well. Uh, so uh, don't think there are any other topics or questions that have come in. Thanks for those uh, that did uh, send those in. Hope you've enjoyed our whistle stop tour of France and French rail today. It's been great to have your company. Hope you enjoy the rest of your Tuesday afternoon uh, and hope to see you again soon on one of our online presentations. In the meantime, stay safe, stay well, uh, and I will speak to you soon. Thanks very much, everybody. Bye bye.